This little uh, beauty right here is a handheld computer from Panasonic in 1983, the RL H14100. And the estate sale where I got it at, some of it was crammed in this box, a lot of it was crammed in this little uh, satchel here. I don't know if that's a, an original Panasonic satchel or not, but it was all up and ready for sale and I paid $10 for the whole setup on half price day. So we have the main handheld computer, we have a little printer, which might have a model number on it, the P100, P1004A, working condition, eh. and uh, some rolls of more thermal printer paper, our main instruction manual, this little tray that the computer and then the printer slide in together and hook up. Well, if you have a flat surface, you don't need that little tray. Let's see, we have a little nice leather satchel to put the uh, computer in when you're carrying it or protect it while it's charging. And we had a lot of paperwork. Apparently the lady that had this was an insurance agent and they must have made her buy this and then they supported it over the years. And our power adapter with a story behind it. So let's start looking at it little by little. And we'll start with a general look around the computer. Uh, it's all plastic, not unattractive. LCD screen, I think it's 24 characters. Various points of where you're at. There'll be a little bar above that when you're on them. I think there's 65 or 66 keys here. A lot of them have second functions that you can access by looking in the, uh, you can tell what they are by looking in the instructions. They'll identify them in a color key. I haven't gone through all these and kind of confusing. But there's certainly a way to figure out what the keys do, but they're not spaced like a normal keyboard, I'll tell you that. I can waste minutes looking for something. We have our main on and on switch, off switch, and clear to clear your thing or press that twice and you'll go back to the main menus on the LCD screen. Let's see. I'm just using this little rester for the computer today so we can get a better look at what's on the LCD screen. On the left side we have our connector. On the bottom we have our speaker and a main on and off switch. You can turn that all off if you're going to leave it unplugged for a year I guess. Um, but in general I'd run that with on. A couple little manufacturing notes here. And then here Here's where you put your program capsules. Now mine doesn't have any program capsules in it, yet there is some proprietary software apparently loaded into the internal memory. The lady who owned this obviously bought it or was forced to buy it by her insurance company. And there's some insurance stuff in here to give people quotes. I don't think we'll suffer with that. Last thing you want to do on YouTube is come and get an insurance quote. But there's nothing there. And around the right side we have our power source. Um, DC, 9 volts. That brings me to our first point here. Here's the power adapter that was with it. You can see a date code of, what is that, August 30th, 1983. Tip negative, 9 volts DC out. So when I got this home from the estate sale, I knew it, Nike had batteries from decades aren't going to work. So I'd have to run it on the AC adapter. And I plugged it in and got nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I was pretty disappointed, even though I only spent $10 for the whole thing. But the next day, 
I had a brainstorm. What if the computer's okay? What if, what if the adapter was bad? So I decided to test it. Let's see what happened. All right, checking the power adapter from the Panasonic handheld computer. Tip negative. And we've got no voltage coming out of it. That explains a lot. So since the adapter was bad, I looked through my box of adapters and I found a tip negative 9 volt 300 milliamps. And I knew not 500 milliamps, it might not charge any batteries that still had life in them, but I should at least be able to operate the machine and I plugged it in and it worked. And much to my surprise, not only did it work, there's still some charge on those batteries in there. All right, looking at the specifications in the manual, 16 kilobytes of ROM plus three capsules, as they call them, containing 16 kilobytes. This particular model has four kilobytes of RAM. I guess you could have got an eight kilobyte model or a two kilobyte model. Keyboard specs, display specs. Power source, our bus, dimensions, and weight. Alright, looking at the manual at some of the optional attachments you could get. Your 232C serial interface. Um, there's lots of pin attachment guides here for that. And there's the specs for that. Input output adapter. This tray is similar to the small one I have for my printer. You can get all kinds of peripherals to set it up. Some specs for that. Programmable memory RAM models. It's going to have its own batteries. There's the specs for that. Boy, the AC adapter. Well, that's a stinker. It doesn't work. Okay. Here's the unit in its nice little uh, Panasonic, very nice supple leather case. You can keep your charger in. The hand strap still carries out. So this I guess is really, since you can't do any operations with it, this is really for protect it when you're carrying it somewhere or when it's charging. But uh, it's a very nice case. Taking a look at some of the paperwork the insurance lady had kept. Uh, this is from 1983. You'll notice this is a uh, Quasar unit, not a Panasonic. So obviously they made these for different people. And you can see what the printing should look like when it was new. Um, this is a 1983 manual. There's lots of other stuff in here too that continues on up to about 1988. Lots of manuals for the software. Some of this software I think they loaded into them for her and she probably had to buy all this in the, the whole Panasonic unit. 
So it's quite a few years here. It all starts in 1983 too. Alright, we'll take a look at a couple of the functions here, turning it on. And I don't know how long these old ancient batteries will last. Um, if things fade out, I'll switch to the power adapter. But as you can see, it goes through its main functions. You've got the uh, first one is the calculator. I could press one and get to the calculator. I could press two and get to the clock and the alarm controller. Three would bring up my files. Four would be what they call snap programs, which is apparently a programming language which this thing runs. And five is apparently the software that her insurance company loaded onto here for her. And uh, we don't want an insurance quote, but I'll press it anyway. And it gives you the, some of those things that we found in the paperwork, the uh, different types of insurance quotes that they had. Let me press one here, I don't know. CompuFlex 3, new inputs, modify inputs, print inputs, illustrate. Now I'm going to press illustrate. I don't know what it's, edge search is. I'm going to press illustrate and it will take, I think, all of the inputs she could have inputted with her results from the inputs that we're going to print out and then it would just scroll through them here. So let's press that. Uh, what was that one? Illustrate 4. These are all things that she would have inputted, including the initial premium. And that's the important one, of course, so we're not going to get our insurance quote today. And I guess it's running without a capsule because they loaded it into her internal memory for her. Now going to number four, which is snap programs. Run snap program. Select file, no file. So there's no snap programs in here. But I'm wondering if that insurance stuff was a snap program somehow loaded into the internal memory. All right, let's set an alarm. It's got to be more than 10 minutes from where I'm at now, so... 925, we'll call it. And I can type a message in uh, to associate with the alarm. T I time for a uh, Video. Well, there we go. Now turning it on. She go back to the clock and controllers. Set an alarm. Review an alarm. Acknowledge an alarm. Use arrows, time for a video, and I guess it's now been acknowledged, but I'm going to delete that. You can get, save things out, load things in. Load the paper in, and I do have five new rolls, but the heck the printer doesn't really seem to work anyway as you'll see in a minute but it tries with the printer connected we get a, we get another option number six which we did not have before and you could have the printer say typewriter or cassette load. 
Uh, I've tried both of those and they don't do anything. At least I haven't figured out how to make them do anything without instructions I can't. They seem obvious. You would think when it's in typewriter, you press one and you can type and it'd come out. It doesn't. Cassette load. Save. So I'm going to clear out of that. And now we're going to press input output. Printer out off. I finally figured out pressing one turns the printer on. Now it says on. So now we'll clear out of this. And we'll try some things. All right. Pressing the file system button. Printer's acting up a little here. That might be a print job from the last one. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes this thing moves when I don't expect it. But the only menu I'm getting is new file. It's not going to number two, which is copy file. And it's not going to number three, which is to run my test file, which that might have been. So it won't let me check inputs and outputs. Calculator, clock, file system, and there it sticks. No one, two, or three. But I know the test file is three, so I'll try it. Nope, nothing. So the, the system for printing things I just don't understand. And we'll try it on calculator. But I'm sure I'm not using the printer right, or maybe it's broken. And even if it's working right, the thermalness of it is all out of whack. Well, the printer wouldn't print my test file and it froze. It wouldn't let me even look at the rest of the file menus. One new file, two copy file, three test file. I don't know if I've shown this, this yet in the video, but this is how you can test your files or enter a file. This is what it should have printed out, or should have at least let me see, but it didn't. And uh, it's probably operator error, something to do with what you can see on the screen when you have the printer connected. One, two, three, four. I can never find the function buttons plus. One, two, three, four, and P. So you saw the printer act just a little bit as if it was trying to do something. It moved, but there's nothing there this time. But I have gotten some things at some times, but they're very faint. 1983, this has been the Panasonic RL-H 1400 handheld computer with its little printer attached to it right now. I don't know all about it and I wish I knew more, particularly why this printer interface seems to freeze some of the menu functions. I would have liked to have opened it up and looked inside the way I do in most of my videos, but there might be some cables or something with the peripheral port and LCD display. I'm just not sure what's in there and how to open the thing safely. It might be as simple as unscrewing the four screws on the back. I don't know. But I'm not going to risk it right now today. But I hope you've enjoyed what I was able to show you about the system. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't, please subscribe.